Hi guys, it's Dale Malik here with Watch to Wear. Thank you for joining me today. So before we get started with today's video, just a quick website update. Things are coming along very nicely. We're right on track. Check out that screen capture. Now that's pretty cool. Now today's video is on my top five choices for vintage chronographs under $1,000. As always, these are my personal picks. But probably most importantly, they represent an excellent value. You get a lot of bang for the buck. So without further ado, let's get started. Number five. Now my fifth pick is the Langco watch brand. Now the Langco watch brand is actually part of the Langendorf watch company. It's actually the abbreviation within the company's name. The letters L-A-N within the name Langendorf and the letters C-O within the word company. Now the Swiss watchmaker was founded in 1873 and in the late 1800s it was one of the largest producers of watches in the world. Now the company is best known for its brand Lanco. It was brought to the market in the late 1950s and was discontinued in the late 1960s. However it was revived again from 1971 to the early 1980s. Now one of the most famous Lanco watches was the Flying Saucer or the Lanco Fawn. It was released in 1960 and it featured a manual wound movement with an alarm function. Now Lanco has always been known for its high quality watches and timepieces. Lanco began in the 1970s using calibers stemming from Valjou and Angelus. Now, they have some very interesting chronographs that you can easily find under $1,000. The case sizes are going to range, but the barrel-shaped cases usually come in right around the 37 to 40 millimeter case size. And they have that robust Valjuve movement, usually to 7736 or to 7733. And they make one heck of a buy, and they're a beautiful looking watch, as you can see. Now they also make this beautiful looking panda dial watch with the Valjoux 7734 movement. And the case size is right around 37 millimeters with the crown. But as you can see, these represent a tremendous value. So at number five is the Lenko watch brand. Number four. Now my fourth choice is the Dugina watch company. Now the Dugina watch brand began its roots in the late 1800s under the name Alpina. Then in 1942, the German watchmaker changed its name from Alpina to Dugina due to regulations that prohibited it to continue to market in Germany under the name Alpina. Now soon after, in 1948, Dugina moved its headquarters from East to West Germany and the company became one of the most important and valuable companies in West Germany at the time. Now it was during the late 1960s and the 1970s that the company witnessed tremendous success. Its men and women's watches were well known for the reliability and an excellent reputation. Dugina also effectively and successfully, I may add, managed what they called the wristwatch trends. Now during the quartz revolution or the quartz crisis in the 1970s, now this is when the Swiss watch industry sought to develop watch quartz technology. Dugina created some very high quality quartz watches to meet and fulfill the new generation of watch buyers. However, in 1993, the company was sold to Igana Gofile. Now I really love the Dugina Mazda watch. I would consider it a poor man's Hoya Carrera. The case size is right around 36 millimeters and it's powered by the Valjoux 7733 movement. Now these Duginas can be found for anywhere from around $500 to $700. I just saw one on the watch forums and it sold for right around $650. So these guys make an excellent value and a great bang for the buck. And I also love their diver chronographs from the 1970s. They have that beautiful looking barrel shaped case and they measure in around 38 millimeters. They're absolutely lovely. And they're typically powered by the Valjoux 7733 movement. So at number four is 
the Dugina watch brand. Number three. Now my third pick is the Buttes Watch Company, or better known as BWC. It was founded in 1924 by Arthur Charlotte. Now BWC's main focus was on pocket watches. Originally, their watches were available in Germany and then expanded to England, Spain, Poland, and Hungary. Now soon after, sales expanded to other parts of Europe and overseas as well, including the United States, Cuba, and Canada. Now going forward in 1953, Mr. Charlotte's son-in-law, Edwin Volkart, assumed control of the watchmaker. Now it was under his control that BWC embraced the ever-changing watch technology. And in the year 1967, the company launched electromechanical watches. And in 1972, featured a quartz digital display. And ultimately, in 1975, developed a fully quartz analog watch. Now after a reorganization in 1999 and subsequent other changes, BWC in the year 2004 at Baselworld witnessed tremendous success and it was due to a very bold marketing plan featuring new products. Now the watch that I really love, there's actually two types, both the reverse and the standard Panda dial. It's dubbed the poor man's Hoya Carrera. As you can see, it's very true to the Carrera size. Comes in right around 36 millimeters with the crown and it's powered by the Landeron 248 movement. A beautiful, excellent, robust movement. Now these watches, you can pick them up on the watch forms, definitely under $1,000, even on eBay as well. But as you can see, they got that beautiful, timeless design. You gotta love it. So at number three is the BWC watch brand. Number two. Now my second choice is the Wakeman Watch Company. Now Wakeman at the time was an importer of high-end watch brands for the North American market. Since the U.S. Department of Commerce started to impose custom duties on high-end imported Swiss watches. They're best known for importing the Breitling watches. Now this business strategy proved to be an excellent opportunity for Mr. Wakeman to start a watch company in America. Thusly, the Wakeman Watch Company was born in 1946 and was based in New York. Now Wakeman began producing watches under the Wakeman name shortly after World War II. They also supplied timekeeping devices for the armed forces, including cockpit clocks for both the military and commercial aircraft. They also produced professional wristwatches for pilots. And they also supplied timekeeping devices for the United States government, commercial airlines, and radio and television studios. Now, Wakeman's history with Breitling began in October of 1947 as a joint venture. And consequently, Breitling Watch Corporation of America was formed in New York. The Wakeman Watch Company also established partnerships with Charles Gigande. Then soon after, Breitling would completely purchase the Wakeman Watch Company. Now Wakeman's probably best known for its triple date watch. We feature that in one of our previous videos. But they also have some beautiful looking chronographs that you can definitely purchase under a thousand bucks. Now they feature either the Landron or the Valju movement and they have that beautiful looking panda or reverse panda dial. Now the case sizes are probably a little bit bigger for that time. They measure in right around 38 millimeters, but they also have these beautiful looking barrel shaped case watches from the 1970s, and they usually run by the Valju 7734 movement, and the case sizes are a little bit bigger, right around the 38 to 39 millimeters. But at number two is the Wakeman watch brand. Number one. Now my number one pick is, drum roll please, is the Kellogg Watch Company. Now the Kellogg Watch Company was founded in 1960, although the company's heritage dates back to the late 1800s. At the beginning, Kellogg manufactured complicated watches, such as bad chronographs, mainly for the military personnel. Soon after, the watchmaker became very prominent as a specialist for complications. 
Now in the 1960s, Kellogg developed a very close relationship with Willie Breitling. And as a result, Kellogg's involvement in developing complications for Breitling became more important and definitely more instrumental. Consequently, in 1997, a corporate marriage was born. And soon after, it was called Breitling Chronometry. Now, Kellogg makes a few different watch case styles. The 1970s barrel or cushion shape with the big eye is very nice and true to its era. You gotta love the big eye. The case size is right around 39 millimeters and it's usually powered by the Valjoux 7733 movement. Now, my personal favorite is the football timer. It's powered by the Valjoux 7733 movement and the case size is right around 37 millimeters and it comes with that beautiful big eye and these watches you can pick up definitely for under a thousand dollars I just saw one on eBay that sold for right around 700 bucks and it was absolutely beautiful and it had the big eye so at number one is the Kellogg watch brand okay guys in closing now you know my top five picks for vintage chronographs under $1,000 but I want to know what you think. Leave your comments below and check us out on Facebook and Instagram. And in closing, make sure that you will always have a watch to wear.